Job 17 is Job continuing from chapter 18. And he's about had it. And chapter 17 is just a little... Uh, I don't know what you would call it. Just hit or misses. It's a little bit of this and a little bit of that. I mean, it's a man that suffered. It's a man that his mind is there, here. One minute my, my children have... Died. One minute my wife is scolding me out. One minute I got this guy yelling at me. Oh, my crops are gone. My, my animals are gone. This idiot won't shut up. I, oh, I'm aching. I'm sore. I'm, and it would be anybody in the anxiety and troubles that Job has. Remember, Job has had it all thrown at him at once. You're looking at a thing with Job as like a tornado has come down and touched down, and there are deaths, and there's just nothing there no more. And your two neighbors and the guy across the street, they're still there. And they've come to your lot to tell you why your house is gone. Misery. And we're going to learn some things more about Job. My breath is corrupt. My days are extinct. That's the, that's the first time that word should. We know what extinct means. The dinosaurs are extinct. Job saying, now remember, he's not saying I'm go I, I want to die. He says, listen, I'm going to die. One day I'm going to die. And it's quite interesting, he says, the graves, is that plural, are ready for me. I don't understand why that's plural for one man. Possibly somebody dug all the graves for his family members. Could be, yeah, that could be it. I got, let me see what I got here for Jeremiah. I got Jeremiah note. Jeremiah, let me take a look. I got so many notes in here. And it's just weird, it's plural. I mean, it just graves of the common people. But it could be a family graveyard, as as said. I mean, he, he may be linking his family as one unit. My children and I were just so close. Are there not markers? First time that word shows up with me. Gee, I wonder who he's talking about. And he's going to go back, I said, he's going to go back and forth, back and forth. But I wonder who he's talking about. And does not my eye continue in their provocation? Provocations excite resentment, anger. I wonder who he's talking. Now, now look, 17 chapters and chapter 3, Job starts in, you know, I wish I died. I wish I, I, I wouldn't live any longer. Chapter 4 brings up his first friend. And by chapter 17, Job's like, Man, you guys are just angry at me. Lay down now, put me in the surety with thee. Who is he that striketh hands with me? Who, who's going to make a, a, a legal surety of a dispute between me out of you guys? And I don't know what to lay, lay down now. I mean, I don't know if it's night, let's lay down, let's get some sleep, shut up. Or just, you know, let's call the thing to an end. Let's stop this bickering. But who is going to make a legal defense for me? Who's going to strike? Who's going to help me sign the documents? It's a legal standard of surety. I am going to give my word that Job is a man of his word. Again, it's interesting that he says lay down. I don't know if this is the middle of the night. I like, just shut up and go to sleep. Now, and I'm picturing as we read through this. Someone's about to say something, and, and you, you, we've already seen the interruption. For thou, Job speaking, has hid their heart from understanding. That's, for thou, that would be God. God, you've given no understanding at all. Man, he's just ragged on him. Remember, Eliphaz in the last chapter 15, we read, he got all angry with Job. Who do you think you are telling us that we don't know nothing? 
Job has answered back, you still don't know nothing. Job has not changed his opinion. Therefore, because God has not given him understanding, shalt thou not exalt them. God. God's not going to lift you three up. You have not done what you're supposed to do. He that speaketh flattery, that's a sin in the Bible. Now, I don't know who the he is because it's definitely not his friends. They are not speaking, oh, Job, we just love you so much. Again, he's going back and forth. Whatever's coming in his head now, has just his head has been so overwhelmed. And he that speaketh flattery to his friends, and the possible context is, I am not just going to say sweet things to you guys. Job says, I'm going to speak the truth. And when I'm in the public ministry that you know, I only speak what I know, there are people who come up to me, that's not what Jesus would do. That's not what the Bible said. That's not what you do. You're turning people away. And what they want me to do is they want me to use flatteries to say, God loves everybody. And they want me to preach that everybody will go to heaven one day. You want to be sweet with the tongue. You know, you drive people away. It, I'm not going to be like that. God has given me a loud mouth and uh, ability to speak the truth with sarcasm. And I've done it today at the farmer's market. And it's so great with sarcasm, the guy I was speaking about in my message for all, he didn't get it. But he's like, Job's saying, like, I'm not, I'm not going to tickle your ear like preachers and teachers are doing today in the Laodicean church age. You say, well, how do you get the tickling of ear? Read the church bulletin boards out front of the church house. Jesus is coming. Look busy. Smack that, smack that preacher with a Bible in the face three or four times. It's Woman Appreciation Day. Smack him with a Bible. Get one of those big family Bibles that they keep in the bookshelf with all the family listening in the front page. Grab that nice heavy Bible and smack that guy in the face or a woman. Especially a woman. You ought not be preaching. Even the eyes of his children, the three men, shall fail. Now what's that all about? As a man is, so is he going to teach his children. And if this is Job speaking flattery, all right, you guys want me to flatter. If this is Job speaking, his children are dead. So it is a general, Job does not have any idea his children are coming back to life. Don't go to chapter 42 because it has not happened in Job's life. Job is speaking about him and Job is coming up with context. It's general for all. And if you guys would turn around and start being flattering to me, it ain't going to work. He has made me also a byword of the people. And aforetime, I was as a tabret. Job, he's a judge in the, in the gate. He was talked about. He was well-liked. He had a good character. People maybe sang songs about, including Job. Job had respect among the community. And now that he's been visited with torture and been visited with, with death, he's been visited with, you know, agony and sorrow, people are not there no more. And the Old, Te Old Testament, and it's true for the Old Testament, not today. If a man was rich and doing well, he was well liked by God. That's an Old Testament teaching. And if you're rotten and, and you're, you're miserable and you don't have nothing, you're doing something wrong. So by what has happened to Job's life in the Old Testament, Job, you're in evilness, you're in wickedness. And yet we know by Job chapter 1 and Job chapter 2, that's not the case. Now we definitely cannot, will not, and should not apply that application to the church age. 
Oh, because you're because you're a homeless person, you know, you must be with you know, you might be a product of Republican or Democrat government we have. As my wife said, you know, it only takes one person to push the one button, the George Jetson. That's all George Jetson. He pressed that one button all day. You know, there were no other employees working with George Jetson. And then, you know, our government not taking care of our troops. And when they've they gone over to Afghanistan, and they come back with, and I'm going to be, I'm going to say a disease because I don't understand it completely, but I am saying it's a reliable, it's a fact that they come back sick. I mean, no ill of that word. And the government don't take care of them. The only thing they do is they got to go off and be secluded from the world. That's not, that's not the man's fault. That's not the woman's fault. But the government can turn around and go take care of people who don't do nothing for a living. Job has been put through the ringer and no one's there for him. And when you live for God, the Bible says, All they that live godly for Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Marvel not if the world hates you, especially your family. You know, the last family member we read about Job... She said, does I retain thy, curse, th thy integrity? Curse God and die. And that was his wife. Your family will be the worst ones that will treat you. I, I know that personally. I know that personally. My eye also is dimmed by reason of sorrow. So, Job is pain and sorrow. We've seen this before. His eyes, he's talked about crying all the time. His eyes are red with tears. They're coming down with, 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 with tears. Maybe so much, he don't even have any more tears left. And he's getting antagonized. All my members, that's the first time that word shows up. And this is a great place to show up. Are a shadow. That's his family. And when you become a member of a church, you're supposed to be the family of that church. And the only way you can be a family of that church is when you are a child of God. You have no business being an unsaved person being a member of a church. You're not in the body of Christ. The most ill-begotten words that can be outside of a church is, all are welcome. And there are churches out there who have memberships of unsaved people. And here it falls over Job's family. I mean, shadow, you, you know, hear it and go on. Upright men shall be astonished stunned at this. The life of Job, the sufferings of Job, the sorrow of Job, the vacancy of Job. And I mean vacancy, there's no one there. I bet you had plenty of friends before, more than three. He had people singing about him. And the innocent shall stir up himself against the hypocrite. Oh, you wonder who Job's talking about that one. Who's the hypocrite? Those three guys. Who's the innocent as far as dealing with these four men talking? Job. But he's a sinner. But chapter 8. Is a true fact of all life, any age. The righteous also shall hold on his way. What's that? Jesus Christ is our way. Our righteousness is Jesus. The Bible, the Bible says the fact is, for Jesus became our sin. Jesus, for for a man who had no sin, that our righteousness of God is in Christ. So if I'm righteous today by Jesus Christ, then my righteousness is in the way. Jesus said, I am the way. And he that has clean hands shall be stronger and stronger. And the Pharisees took that too much. You know, we read about today, the family, you know, he didn't wash your hands for eating bread. And the clean hand is your innocent. And the more you're innocent, the more God's going to give you strength. And the more strength that God gives you, He's going to give you more strength to do more and more for Him. 
And it'd be like if a newborn babe, the sincere milk of the word, to an age Christian that is devouring meat. That's stronger and stronger. But as for you, I wonder who that is. All do ye return and come out now. For I, Job, cannot find one wise man among you. Oh! You're not wise. Back to, you know, just thinking out loud, Job. My days are past. My purposes are broken off. Even the thoughts of my heart. I mean, look at the condition he's in. They change the night into day. The light is short because of darkness. It's just trouble and problems all around me. If I wait, the grave is mine. House, I'm going to die. For all of us, true. I have made my bed in the darkness. Death is dark. For the body, not for the soul and the spirit. I have said to corruption, that's rot in the grave. You're decaying, because what? Thou art my father. To the worm, that's your body in the grave being eaten. Thou art my mother and my sister. So he's liking the death as a family relation. Why? Because that's where he came from. Genesis chapter 2, we come from dirt. We're going to return back to dirt. Unless the Lord comes. And if you are dead, if you've been corrupted as Peter, James, and John, their bodies have been corrupting and is corrupted. When Jesus Christ comes, he's going to make it all new. And where is now my hope? As for my hope, who shall see it? So he's telling these guys, you know, after all this talk, I'm hopeless. <laughs> you made me hopeless. They shall go down to the bars of the pit. And that's a quite expression you find in Job. Somewhere in the bottom of this earth. There are pillars. And there are bars. Jesus says the gate of hell. Jonah says that he was in the, the foundation of mountains. And the bars. I don't know how you could not say he didn't die. He went into hell. Now. I don't know if Job thinks he's going to hell or he's going to see hell. But that's a, usually a reference to the pit and bars. That's a reference to hell. The underworld. When our rest, death, together is in the dust. When they put us in the ground, we're going to rot. We're going to decay. Then the worms are going to feast on me. They know that much. They're not that, they just don't have an idea of what happens after death. They believe that there's, and it's true, there's going to be one general resurrection for them. Revelation 20. Not so for the church age. 